In Shaanxi, China has just completed a 2-kilometer vacuum maglev test line that promises to slash high-speed rail costs by 60%, a feat experts once dismissed as science fiction. Everyone remembers how the Hyperloop dream in the West crumbled under broken promises and runaway expenses. But now, with the world's first full-scale vacuum maglev line quietly passing real-world validation, the question is no longer if, but how far can this go? Has China just rewritten the rulebook, or are we on the verge of repeating history? This is where the untold battle between hype and reality truly begins. In August 2013, a 57-page white paper landed online, signed by Elon Musk. It laid out a plan for a new kind of train, one that could shoot passengers from Los Angeles to San Francisco in just 35 minutes, faster than a jet, at a fraction of the cost. The secret was simple on paper. A pod gliding through a low-pressure tube, nearly free of air resistance, propelled by linear motors and floating on an air cushion. Musk called it the Hyperloop, a fifth mode of transport. He made the idea open source, inviting startups and engineers everywhere to make it real while he focused on rockets and electric cars. Within a year, venture capital flooded in. Hyperloop One, later Virgin Hyperloop, built a half-mile test track in Nevada and raised over $400 million. Hyperloop Transportation Technologies signed deals with cities from Abu Dhabi to Toulouse, promising feasibility studies and test sites. But the dream ran into hard limits. Keeping a vacuum across hundreds of kilometers proved far more expensive than anyone expected. Leaks, warping, and vibration plagued the prototypes. Regulators had no rulebook for certifying a passenger pod hurtling through a sealed tube at jetliner speeds. Land rights, environmental reviews, and safety systems for emergencies he turned into years of delay. By December 2023, Virgin Hyperloop shut down, its assets sold off, and its vision quietly shelved. Other startups pivoted to freight or faded away, unable to bridge the gap between Silicon Valley optimism and real-world engineering. The Hyperloop became a cautionary tale, bold ideas undone by physics, cost, and the limits of private capital. For a decade, the concept looked finished. No one had made it work at scale. The world moved on, convinced the Hyperloop was a mirage. Construction crews broke ground in Yanggao County, Shanxi, in April 2022. Over the next 19 months, a two-kilometer vacuum tube rose from the plains, a structure unlike anything else in the world. This was not a speculative model or a digital rendering. The line was built, sealed, and powered up for real-world testing by November 2023. At its heart, the project brought together the Third Research Institute of CASIC, the North University of China, and a roster of engineers from the China Railway 6th Bureau Group. Their mission was clear, prove that maglev trains could float, steer, and stop safely inside a low vacuum tube, not just in theory, but in practice. The first integrated system test was a milestone. Inside the sealed tube, the maglev pod achieved stable levitation, tracked its assigned path with precision, and executed controlled braking, all under conditions designed to mimic a scaled-down version of future intercity routes. Project leads reported that the pod's trajectory matched predictions, while the vacuum environment stayed within strict tolerances. Every component, from the superconducting magnets to the segmented vacuum pumps, was monitored for performance. But what truly set the Shanxi line apart was its price tag. According to CASIC and engineering teams, the modular steel concrete tube and prefabricated construction methods slashed costs by about 60% compared to traditional maglev systems. That figure, echoed in technical journals and attributed to automation and new materials, became the headline claim. No independent audit has been published, but the promise is ambitious. A working prototype, delivered at a fraction of the expected cost and the first of its kind anywhere on the planet. The ambition behind Shangxi's vacuum maglev line is nothing short of a technological leap. Engineers here aren't aiming for incremental improvements. They want to reach 1,000 km per hour, a speed that would leave even Japan's record-setting maglevs far behind. At the center of this push are two names, Xiaoming, 
technical lead at Kasich's Institute of Maglev and Electromagnetic Propulsion, and Mao Kai, the chief designer. Their team is building what they call a roadmap to ultra-high-speed travel, using a combination of superconducting magnets, modular vacuum tubes, and artificial intelligence to manage every detail of the ride. Superconducting levitation is the heart of the system. Instead of riding on wheels or even traditional maglev rails, the train floats above the track, held in place by powerful magnets cooled to near absolute zero. This eliminates friction almost entirely, allowing for smooth acceleration and stable flight inside the tube. The vacuum environment maintained at just 2% of normal air pressure slashes drag to a fraction of what high-speed trains face today. Every tube segment is built in factories, then snapped together on site, minimizing cost and keeping tolerances tight. According to project reports, the diameter of each tube can't vary by more than 2 millimeters over the full stretch, or the pod risks turbulence at high speeds. But speed alone isn't enough. The system relies on an AI-driven control network that tracks the pod's position, adjusts magnetic fields in real time, and coordinates braking or acceleration for safety. Zhao Ming's team has already faced and solved problems like vibration and ride comfort that stumped earlier Hyperloop attempts. With each successful test, the team inches closer to their target, a full-scale demonstration system that could, in theory, carry passengers across China at speeds faster than most commercial jets. The promise is more than just speed. It's a vision of travel that could shrink a country the size of China into a network of cities just minutes apart. Maintaining a sealed vacuum across even two kilometers is a feat. Stretch that to 60 or 1,000, and the challenge grows exponentially. Every seam, access hatch, and expansion joint becomes a potential leak, demanding round-the-clock pumping to keep air pressure at just 2% of normal. No one yet knows the true cost of this upkeep over decades. The energy burden is heavy too. Shanxi's grid still relies on coal for over 70% of its electricity, so every hour of vacuum maintenance and cryogenic cooling adds to both the carbon footprint and operating expenses. Inside the tube, ride comfort has been a stubborn problem. Early test runs produced jarring vibrations, enough to make even the engineers uneasy. The breakthrough came from a new control algorithm, tuned to make thousands of magnetic adjustments per second. The result? A smoother ride, though independent reviewers have yet to verify the data. Then there's the question of what happens when something goes wrong. Emergency evacuation protocols for a sealed high-speed tube remain under wraps. Fire, depressurization, or a medical crisis would leave passengers stranded with no clear path to safety. Critics point to the lack of published safety simulations and the absence of third-party audits. Beneath the headlines, some analysts warn that the 60% cost savings may not survive the realities of maintenance, energy use, and safety retrofits. The true price of ultra-high-speed travel may only reveal itself when the system is scaled up, if it ever is. China's vacuum maglev line in Shanxi is more than a laboratory experiment. It's a statement of intent on the world stage. Developed by Kasik, a state-owned giant with deep roots in both aerospace and defense, the system is positioned as the next export-ready package for the Belt and Road Initiative. This isn't just about running trains faster at home. If the technology proves itself, it could be offered as a turnkey solution to partner countries, much like China's earlier high-speed rail deals from Indonesia to Laos. The dual-use angle carries weight. The same expertise in vacuum engineering and magnetic propulsion that powers this line also underpins missile systems and satellite launches. As a result, foreign analysts are watching not just for commercial contracts, but for signs of strategic technology transfer. Intellectual property claims swirl around the project, with Chinese officials stressing independent innovation to bolster both national branding and future export ambitions. For Beijing, the stakes go beyond engineering. 
They're about shaping the next era of global infrastructure and signaling a new center of gravity for advanced transport technology. No one outside the project has seen the raw telemetry from Shangxi's maglev tests. Speed logs, vibration data, energy consumption all remain locked away, with only peak numbers and broad claims making it into public reports. Even the headline 623 km per hour run is just a single number, not a curve or a trace. The scenario analysis for the 60 km extension sits in limbo. There's no approved budget, no official timeline, and no sign-off from the National Development and Reform Commission. On paper, the next step could launch a new era of travel, but without funding, the project risks stalling at the prototype stage. The future splits here. Either the data and money flow, or the world's most ambitious vacuum maglev becomes a closed experiment, its promise untested at scale. In November 2023, China completed the world's first 2-kilometer low-vacuum maglev test line in Shaanxi, claiming a 60% cost reduction over previous high-speed maglev systems. This achievement marks a clear break from earlier Western Hyperloop attempts that stalled due to technical and financial barriers. The project, led by the CASIC Third Research Institute and North University of China, has demonstrated stable levitation and controlled braking in real-world tests. However, critical details, such as raw speed telemetry, public energy consumption data, and official approval for the planned 60-kilometer extension, remain undisclosed. No independent sources have verified the full system's performance or economic sustainability. As of now, the Shanxi test track stands as both a symbol of technological ambition and an open question. Whether this breakthrough will reshape global transportation or remain a high-profile prototype depends on evidence yet to be released. The facts are clear. The dream is no longer just theory, but its future is still unwritten.